Greetings. This video is kind of meant as a follow-up to the rapture correction warning. It is something about the, the years of the beast. Because of course, as looking at scripture through the rapture correction warning, we see that scripture is actually telling us that the return of the Lord will be at the end of the tribulation and not before. And so that's an entirely different way to look at it. But that is the scriptural way. And so I just wanted to give you some thoughts on what those years will be like. Now I'm telling you that these are my thoughts. I don't see anything that will describe daily life or a, a definite itinerary of these three and a half years, a little over three and a half years for the beast. Uh, so just remember that these thoughts are based on scripture. They are based on watching as a watchman would do. Uh, so I ask that you would receive this prayerfully, but just remember, I'm not being dogmatic, but these are some things for you to consider. Okay, first of all, the world government and the beast will come into power after World War III. I do not see this happening before World War III, especially as far as the beast goes. I think he will make a grand entrance after this devastating war, as if to save mankind. As far as world government, it already exists on high levels. It's just not out in the open. Many, of course, in the governments around the world, they're all working for this goal, and that is to bring the world under one government. Uh, as far as the, uh, the transition into world government, so we're looking at World War III. If this, if this world war is, as I have seen from Revelation 9, 13 through 19, we are looking at one third of mankind being killed in one hour. In other words, it will be a devastating nuclear war. And so the question is, how long to transition to this world government? Because obviously the world will be in chaos. A lot of communications, I mean, they will be down. Some have thought that it could be up to a year. However, I don't think that it will be that long because this is a planned event. In other words, they already know what they want to do, and so they already have the systems in place. There are also come into, into being, with the world government, 10 economic zones. Okay, this is somewhat like uh, the European Union, except on a broader scale. Around the world, there will be 10 economic zones. I don't remember exactly what they are. I didn't memorize them. I know that Canada, the United States, and Mexico uh, are part of one. Okay. Now, who is the beast? I have no idea. Some people say, it is this guy, it is that guy. We've already gone over this, that the beast has to be revealed. And he will be revealed and everyone will know. I mean, this is, this is someone posing as God. This is someone taking over the world. Okay. And so we will all know it will be seen. But I think that he will be a relatively unknown figure. It, he could possibly pose as an alien. Uh, I don't really like that. But I see in terms of Genesis chapter 6, when the sons of God were coming into women and having children by them, uh, we consider these would be fallen angels. And these fallen angels could well pose as aliens, and this would make them certainly a relative unknown. I say a relative unknown because uh, you see that a prophet has, has no honor in his own country. Remember that during the earthly years of Jesus, how his own country did not receive him. They said he is the son of Joseph. He's the carpenter's son. We have known him all his life. And so they didn't respect him too much because of that. Now, he was perfect, and he was still the son of God. But you think about how imperfect many of these leaders are that you're looking at. And for those reasons, I don't think that uh, the beast, the Antichrist, uh, or really Satan, would take over uh, the body of someone who has been known for 30, 40, 60, 70 years, because they would have too much dirt and they would not be respected as God. And we also have to remember that uh, the beast is going to suffer from a mortal head wound. This may be an assassination attempt, but by this he is going to sort of prove to the world 
that he is God, that he is something special. We remember that when the beast comes, he himself is going to unite the religions of the world. This is another key factor. He will pose as the Messiah for every religion. So he will not outright uh, reject Christianity, but he will try to blend it with the other religions. So we need to remember that. And of course, scripturally, that doesn't work. Jesus alone is the way to the Father, and his name alone is by which we must be saved. Now, what do I think about the false prophet and the image of the beast? I believe the, the false prophet will be the last pope, whomever that shall be. Right now, that pope is Pope Francis. Pope Francis is the first pope that is actually a Jesuit. The Jesuits are more or less the Catholic military. Some have said that the, the Jesuits are the real power in the Vatican. I do not know if it will be Pope Francis. Right now it looks like him. It is my speculation that the false prophet will be the last pope. As far as the image of the beast, I believe that image will be an AI robot, an artificial intelligence robot. Uh, years ago, for years now, many people have been saying it would be a hologram, and it could be, but I am seeing how far along this uh, artificial intelligence has come. Even America has a robotic army. It's not very big, but they are training it. They are using it. A uh, number of nations have robotic policemen. Uh, I believe it will be an AI robot an image of the beast that will be given life. Now, what about the mark of the beast? Okay, we see that the mark of the beast, of course, will be on the right hand or the forehead. It is most commonly, commonly thought, I think rightly so, there will be some type of microchip implant, uh, grain of rice, perhaps. Uh, some people have speculated of course, there has been this uh, dread disease that has affected the world for the past couple years. And as a supposed cure for this disease, they have recommended a certain needlework for the population. And by this needlework, you will be identified. And many, many places you will not be allowed to travel unless you have had it. And this can be tracked. Many of these, many of this, uh, the type of needlework varies from uh, pharmaceutical to pharmaceutical maybe, but it can be trapped. And so some have uh, been concerned that this might be the mark of the beast. But I think it is only a forerunner to the mark of the beast. It's kind of conditioning people for the idea that they will not be able to buy or sell unless they have a certain mark. And they're already very willing to take it. And so uh, also the, the mark of the beast will be the mark, will be the number of a man. And I remember that, you know, the beast, this is Satan. This is the devil at his high point. And he will want worship. And so he's not trying to trick people into, whoops, I took the mark. He wants them to worship him. He wants them to do that voluntarily. And he is very deceitful. And he could make this happen. Now, as far as the mark of the beast goes, obviously, and even more obviously, in of that the world is recovering from this war, it is not going to be an instantaneous process. When you look in scripture, it says that he causes all, he causeth all to take the mark. This is his goal. This is what he wants to do. And he will have great success and it will be an increasing success throughout the three and a half years. But obviously, because Christians are here, there will, not everyone will have the mark. As a matter of fact, if you look even in like Revelation 12, 14, the scripture intimates that there will be a place in the wilderness for believers to flee to. But whether we are actually there or not, whether I have understood this prophecy or not, God will take care of you. He has told us to flee and he will take care of us. But we must stand for the truth. We must stand for the truth. Now, another issue that might come up out of this is, what about repentance? Will people be able to repent? Now, I think as we know, seeing this time, seeing even the testimony of the Bible itself, repentance will be, 
impossible. It will be nearly, it will be so close to impossible. People won't want to do it because this will appear like God himself has come to the planet to save the earth. Hey, you know, why would they do this? He's providing for them. There is peace. We don't have to worry about war anymore. Everybody is getting along. This is not going to look like a, a tremendously evil day. And so the question is repentance. There is nothing that I see within Revelation that tells me it is not possible. If you remember the example of Ruth from the Old Testament, Ruth was a Moabitess. But the Old Testament said, God was instructing, saying, you will not take an Ammonite or a Moabite into the congregation of Israel forever. And yet it was through Ruth, Ruth that the lineage of Jesus Christ came on earth. That is because she humbled herself. She sought the Lord. She was a Christian before Christ. So what do you say to that? You say that repentance is possible. And by the nature of what I see, even when God says, oh, and men will not repent for their murders and for the things they are doing. That shows me it's still possible and he's still reaching out. That would mean someone, if they took the mark, they would have to reject the mark, either get it removed or they couldn't took the, take the benefits of it or whatnot. But it is theoretically possible, although uh, how many would do that, I, I couldn't say. But I do also think that there will be some left here who haven't taken the mark, who never, who had never uh, received Christ as Savior. For one reason or another, they will just disagree with the world system and not wish to go along with it. And again, as I already started to allude to, the beast will come as an angel of light. He will appear to be a good thing. So many times we think of these days of the tribulation as so dark because of the Antichrist, because of the beast but he will appear to be good. That's how it will look at first, and it will only kind of cascade downhill over time, just like it was with Hitler. Hitler was a very, very good leader for Germany, and it only cascaded downhill over time to see what really became of the nation and the world uh, because of him. As far as cutting off Christians, this is going to be rather subtle. It will, they, he will not be coming out with this at first. Remember, he is trying to unite the world, and he wants to look good. So how can that be if he comes out murdering people that disagree with him? I don't see that happening. I would be shocked if that would happen. No, I think he will be subtle. I think it's uh, entirely possible that those that are not cooperating with him, he may have them rounded up and sent to places called re-education camps. In other words, trying to get them to see why they're doing the wrong thing and that they should change their minds. Uh, of course, these re-education camps, in the end, they would be death camps if the people don't turn and do what he wants. It will increase over time. It will get worse as uh, he gains the favor of public opinion a little bit. Uh, but we have more to, uh, more to talk about with this. Uh, during this time, of the, during this time of the tribulation, uh, just over three and a half years, uh, the beast will be fighting the two witnesses that are found in Revelation 11 uh, from the plagues that they will bring and also the effects, as we have talked about, of, of Wormwood or Planet X. These effects will be sweeping over the, over the earth. Uh, things will be happening. He will pretend as if he has control over these things, but he has no control over these things. He will be claiming uh, different responsibility. If, if bad things are happening, he will, he will claim it as judgment or it's because people aren't fully cooperating. Uh, because in his estate, the beast will honor the God of forces. Remember this from the book of Daniel. He will honor the God of forces. That is the thought that God is a force, not a personality, like the Star Wars force. And so he might say, because we are not tuned in with this force, bad things are happening. But of course, he will have no power over the witnesses until the very end. And then he will have no power over Planet X. I do believe that Mystery Babylon, referred to in chapters 17 and 18, 
is the United States of America. Now, many people have identified this as Rome and as the Catholic Church, and I have to disagree because the description of this in, Rome, in uh, Revelation 17 and 18, it's talking about like the center of commerce and a nation that is affecting the world. And that just isn't Rome anymore in a material way. It's just not there. That doesn't mean that the U.S. is not Mystery Babylon uh, b because it's not in Rome. Remember, it is Mystery Babylon. There is a connection and we may not see it. But if you want to think of that connection, just think of the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, this 300-foot stone obelisk, which is definitely all the way from Babylon. That is my belief. You don't have to agree. But one way or the other, the United States is slated for judgment. They have morally and materially corrupted this world. And I am so sad that I have been a part of this deception for so long in my life. I do believe that there will be chaos at the end of this time period. It seems to me biblically that at the very end, there will be a number of nations that rebel against the beast. This is not the kingdoms, this is the nations. In other words, we have talked about the 10 economic regions. Well, there could be 10, 20 nations, I don't know how many, I don't have them memorized again. But some of uh, they would be within an economic region. But some of these nations, and they would still be identifiable, will rebel against the beast. They will come to see that he's not who he said he is, that he has no control over planet X or certain things. And I believe at the very end, uh, there will be chaos, more or less. There will still be a large portion of the world following him. Very, very much so but it will begin to be turned into upheaval. And uh, there are other reasons why I have that opinion, but that'll be enough for now. Another thing that I have seen, and this is a speculation, in Revelations 11.10, it talks about the death of the two witnesses. And it says that when the beast finally is able to kill them, that there will be a great celebration. It says that people will make merry and send gifts one to another. Wow, that sure sounds like Christmas, doesn't it? And so I speculate if this might be at Christmas time, when it is nearing the end of the reign of the, the reign of the beast, that it might happen at Christmas. But one way or the other, I think Christmas is very, very important to the beast. You have to remember that Christmas is actually a pagan holiday which celebrates the birth of the sun god Baal, the birth and resurrection of the sun god Baal. It is not a Christian holiday. And so this goes all the way back to Babylon. And many cultures still observe these days, whether they're fully Christian or not. So I think it will be another way to unite the world under one flag. And I suspect, I watch for when the Antichrist is revealed, because it could well be that uh, when he is finally allowed to overcome the witnesses, it will be during Christmas season, maybe not on the exact day, but during the season. He may claim to mankind, this is my gift to you, though he has little power over that either, except what the Lord gives him, right? Amen. And so finally, we see that the rapture will come just before the battle of Armageddon. This is on the same day as we saw from Luke chapter 17, you can read verses 26 right through 37. 26 through 30 will tell you that it is the same day. You will see that people will be raptured, taken. They'll be in the air above the battle. You'll see that in this passage. But I'm going to read this to you from Revelation. This will be my scripture reading out of this. Because the rapture will come just before Armageddon and on the same day and likely within the same hour. This is just from Revelation 16, verses 12 through 16. This is the sixth vial of God's wrath. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth 
and of the whole world to gather, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And then all of a sudden, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And then verse 16, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. The only verse in scripture that has the name Armageddon. But we all know it, don't we? Brethren, why was this here amidst the, the vial, the, the sixth vial of God's wrath? All of a sudden in the middle of this prophecy, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walks naked and they see his shame. You know what the Lord is saying. He's saying, get ready. Get ready. The time is at hand. When you see this, you know the rapture is coming. This is the sign. It will be the same day and likely the same hour just before. That is the hour of tribulation that we will be pulled, pulled from. Praise be to the Lord. I hope that you have been blessed by this. Pray and take it to heart. I have to wrestle with this fly that has now attacked me. God bless you.